This video is on accounting ratios for companies in matric. Some of these ratios can be used in grade 11, but they're majority focused on the matric company ratios. Okay, the first five of these ratios are what I like to call the on ratios. So they've given you something on something else. So for the first example, it's gross profit on cost of sales. Next would be gross profit on sales. Basically, what you have to do is wherever there's an on, you put a fraction. So it's gross profit on cost of sales. So your formula will be gross profit over cost of sales. For number two, it would be gross profit over sales. And then all of these you times by 100. So I'll go through them individually. Gross profit on cost of sales will be gross profit over cost of sales times 100. These are just um, shortened versions of these words that I've used to make it look more simple. Um, but the wording would come from the ratio over here. The next one is gross profit on sales, which is gross profit over sales times 100. Operating expenses on sales would be operating expenses over sales times 100. Number four, operating income on sales, operating income over sales times 100. Number five, net profit after tax on sales. This would be your net profit after tax over sales times 100. All of these ratios, these first five, they link to profitability and operating efficiency. And generally, when you're meant to comment on profitability in a theory based question, these are the types of fractions or ratios you're going to be looking at, as well as oper operating efficiency. If they want you to comment on operating efficiency, you would use these ratios to provide your opinion. We then move on to the current ratio. This is current assets to current liabilities. This is relevant to liquidity. So if you're asked to comment on liquidity, you would have, you would use the current ratio. Number seven is your acid test ratio. This is very similar to your current ratio, except you have to say current assets minus inventory to current liabilities. This is also linked to liquidity. The difference in the two is with number seven, you are not relying on stock that you have in the business. So if we have a very high current ratio, but a very low asset test ratio, your comment can be that the business is relying too heavily on stock to manage liquidity. Then rate of stock turnover would be your cost of sales over average stock times 365. This is very similar to stock holding period, which is your average stock over cost of sales times 365. It's very important to understand the difference between these two and to be able to give the difference. The rate of stock turnover is how often am I completing my stock and having to refresh my shelves. Stock holding period is how long is my stock on the shelf for. Okay, these two also link to liquidity. My next two are also going to link to liquidity. So it's from six until we are looking at liquidity. You can come use any of these to comment on liquidity in the business. Okay. Average debtors collection. This formula is average debtors over credit sales times 365. This is basically in how many days are my debtors paying me back? Then number 11, average credit pay, creditors payment. This is average creditors over credit purchases 
times 365. This is how many days is it taking me to pay my creditors back? When we say average over here, you're going to take the beginning of the year and the end of the year, plus them together and divide by two. It's the same for average stock. You would take the beginning of the year's stock, end of year's stock, plus them together and divide by two. If they didn't say average debtors collection and they only said debtors collection and they only gave you one value for debtors, then you would just use that debtors. You wouldn't have to average it. But because they're asking for average, you'll give average. Then we move on to solvency ratio. This is my total assets to my total liabilities. This is relevant to solvency. It's in the name. So if they ask you anything to do with commenting the solvency, this is the ratio you would use. It is basically all the assets I have to all the debt I have. And it's how I can pay off the debt, my total debt, using my total assets. Your total assets should be higher than your total debt. Like in current life, Current ratio, current assets should also be higher than current liabilities. It, the, the difference shouldn't be too high though, because if it is too high, then you are having a problem where you could actually have more debt and then you could afford more debt and then use the debt to grow your business and pay it back. So it's all about understanding the concepts and being able to use them practically. This all comes from practice. So it's very important to lots of past papers. And this section is very theory heavy. Okay, the next is my debt equity ratio. This is all long-term liabilities to shareholders equity. Once again, you would rather have more shareholders equity than long-term liabilities. So this side of the ratio should be higher. But like we said with the solvency ratio, you don't want this to be too high. You don't want too big of a difference because if it's a very massive difference, then you are going to have the same problem where you could have more debt and grow your business. Okay, then return on capital employed. This is your net profit before interest and tax over average capital employed multiplied by 100. Okay. When we have net profit before interest and tax, what you would have to do is they would probably give you a net profit after tax. You would then have to add on income tax and then add on interest expense to get to the point where it's actually the amount that was there before you subtracted interest and, and tax. Amount interest is generally interest expense. Okay. Then a side note, average capital employed. That is equity and non-current liabilities. So just make a note of that. Average capital employed is equity plus non-current liabilities. Again, they've, no, they've said average, so we want to take the beginning of the year's amount plus the end of the year's amount and divide by two. Okay. Um, sorry, I forgot to mention with number 13, we are with our debt equity ratio, we are linking this to risk and gearing. Okay, so when, if they ask what is the gearing of the business, Anything to do with risk, we're going to use debt equity. With number 14, this is based off of return and gearing. So it's relevant to any return questions and any gearing questions. Number 15, return on shareholders' equity. This is your net profit after tax over average shareholders' equity times 100. Average shareholders' equity is just your shareholders' equity amount that you've averaged out. So you've taken the beginning of the year plus the end of the year and divide by two. Note that the end of last year and the end of this year 
is the and averaging those out will give you the same as the beginning of the year. So they can either, either give you the beginning and the end of the year, or last year's end of year and this year's end of year. Both are the same thing. Okay. Then earnings per share. We are now going to have our net profit after tax over number of issued shares times 100 cents. Your answer will be in cents. Dividends per share are going to be total dividends. This is all your paid and all your declared dividends. And you're going to divide them by number of issued shares times 100 cents. These three, return on shareholders' equity, earnings per share, and dividends per share, are all relevant to return to shareholders. This is how my shareholders are being affected. So any questions relevant to return on shareholders, these are the three that you're going to use. Okay, then the last ratio is net asset value per share. Now your net asset value, that is your owner's equity basically. And you can, you, you can get two ways to get that amount. Either it's just your ordinary shareholders equity, or you can say assets minus liabilities because it's net asset. So assets minus liabilities. You're then going to divide that by the number of issued shares and times that by 100 cents. That ratio is relevant to share value. This is basically the amount that each shareholder will get per share that he or she has if the business were to shut down. That is the basic amount that the business is worth per share. Okay, these are all the ratios that you need to know for the metric caps exam. It's the same for the IEB. Um, I got this information from the New Era Accounting Textbook. It is going to be in your company's section in your exam. It is very theory heavy um, and it is often quite a difficult section which can only really be bettered with practice. So to go through a lot of old papers and understand how to answer them using the memos, when they speak about commenting and all that sort of stuff. Um, but that's all for this week's, this video.